Hello everybody, this is NCS, and welcome to a quick look at Toho Shinkiro, Hopeless Masquerade, the next fighting game in the official Toho series. Well, the demo of this game is out since a few days now, and I thought I'd show you around this game a little because it is completely different from the previous fighting games. Well, pretty much completely different. So yeah, before I get into the senseless fighting, I guess I'll show you about uh, the profile a bit. Because, well, skill cards aren't uh, activated like in the previous games by fighting a lot and eventually being able to activate them. But instead, your skill cards are your, uh, are always available and unfortunately, unfortunately can't be leveled up anymore. But, uh, well, could be worse, could be better, I don't know. I always uh, upgraded them as much as possible, but anyway, <laughs> I'm getting off track. Um, you're not activating the skill cards by, um, or using them by pressing one of the uh, usual move set uh, with patterns like quarter circle forward, etc. But by pressing one of the four directional buttons and your two uh, hit buttons, well, uh, physical attack buttons, A and B in this case, or the two shot buttons, uh, X and Y, uh, together. So, um, yeah. On default, all of the skill cards are activated by pressing A and B. And yeah, these are the ones to the left here. Um, each character has up to, well, actually exactly, four skill cards. Um, default that Aemon for some reason does not have her somersault equipped. I don't know why I love that attack. <laughs> um, but yeah. And to the right here by, uh, on default, are these two here are spell cards, which are a little differently activated in this game. You can see that there are spell cards by the border, and um, by pressing up in the name's default case, you can activate her last word spell card. Um, I'm getting to that later. Also, the uh, system cards make the return, and I never use them. <laughs> Well, in the Amos case, or her system card, I believe it's pretty much the same as uh, last game. She repels the enemy with that. Uh, yeah. uh, I'm going to get to the moveset of the characters later. But yeah, Marisa's system card uh, replenishes her uh, spirit bar faster, but after a while her spirit bar really completely drains, so be careful with that. And I have no idea what Ichirin does, <laughs> to be all honest. Also, um, when you're playing Ichirin, on default her spell card and system card, uh, well, last word spell card, are placed in a different order. I don't know why, but it is. So yeah, in the profile menu you can switch around the spell cards, can use other ones, but like I said, you only have four skill cards in this game, unlike in the last game, where you had tons of them to use. Maybe there will be more in the final game, but maybe I don't know. But four cards are actually good enough already. Um, yeah. Oh, right, uh, the chart up there—you might have noticed it already. Um, it indicates what kinds of attacks you're using mostly. Um, well, to be all honest, I have no idea what that actually shows because, well, I don't, okay, I know what it shows, but I don't know what it really helps you with because um, what the chart indicates is um, well at the top of the chart uh, the kanji for gods is written uh, one of the three factions in the Toho games as of recently well the rich, religious one uh, indicating probably the Moria shrine as the gods well Kanako, Subako and Sanae to the left we have Taoism the characters of the 13th game, and to the right we have Buddhism, the two or 12 characters. So yeah, as you might guess already, um, I have no idea what that means because, well, yeah, your attacks are based on one of the three religious factions, so what? Does that help you um, deal more damage to a certain character? Does that do anything at all? Is that just for show or... I don't know. Maybe we'll get to see... Uh, an explanation if we actually can read uh, the manual. 
Yeah, I can't read Japanese. Oh well. I am learning it though, a little. But yeah, um, the chart's there, I didn't know why it is there, but it is. So yeah, I guess I'll go into fighting for now, uh, or finally rather. So yeah, um, we have only three characters for now, Raymond, Marisa, and Ichiri. Why her of all of the people, I don't know, but well, it's nice that she's here, I guess. So yeah, you have four different spell card sets. Um, the green one here means calm, this one means anger, I believe. The blue one is for sad, and the yellow one it means, um... I forgot it. Oh well. The uh, symbols actually don't mean anything, it's just, well... For you that you know, okay, this is one I'm using the most offensive deck, I don't know. But yeah, usually I'm only using one set anyway. I have no idea why I'm explaining all that, <laughs> it doesn't even matter. Well yeah, I'm gonna choose Hidema for my first battle. And, um, more importantly, here, uh, if you press right, you can adjust the difficulty of the character. At least I believe it's the difficulty. They do, uh, act differently according to what you choose. The green one here is the easiest one, and all the way to the right, if you don't uh, mind the looping around. The red one here is the most aggressive and the most difficult one. Uh, so yeah. I hope I won't make a complete, complete fool out of myself when I'm trying to explain the gameplay mechanics while fighting, but, uh, well, we'll see. So yeah, one of the first things you might notice is, holy heck, new graphics! And the name looks rather dull, actually. And you also notice that this here is an aerial fighting game. Unlike the previous fighters, which were, well, ground-based. But as you can plainly see, we have still um, the, well, Ranged attacks, quite a lot of them, yeah. Um, so yeah, you shoot by pressing well, Y and X buttons there. I don't know what buttons they are on default actually. Um, I believe they're A and S. What was well, X and Y, um, C and Y, I me. Mean. <laughs> Stupid German keyboards. Yeah, we have uh, the Y button uh, next to the X button, the key. Uh, anyway, yeah, C and X will, uh, I believe they're the physical attacks, and A and S are the projectile attacks. So, um, yeah, use those for attacking, and the, uh, well, the other C, the, uh, third letter of the alpha alphabet, um, that is, uh, on default for use for, um, well, for both physical attacks, and uh, D is the default for um, for both uh, projectile buttons. So that you don't have to actually press both of the buttons at the same time. Uh, when trying to perform one of the, well, yeah, special attacks. So yeah, uh, on the right for now I have Rema's projectiles, well, her uh, talismans. Um, Reima also has a somersault attack, which I would like to show off, but the other Reima doesn't want me to. <laughs> oh, by the way, Reima can move through borders now, she's doing you carry on us, it seems. There's your somersault. And also, Reima can use your Ying Yang orbs. And, well... Yeah, she also has another teleportation attack, but I'm never using that because I'm only getting hit <laughs> when I'm using that. There we go, finally, nice combo. <laughs> so yeah, that's today on the smooth set, and I guess I could show off these ball cards here in this game. In this game, unlike the previous game where you could just use a ball card and then it's activated, in this game you first have to declare the spell card. You can declare spell cards when the blue meter completely fills up your health bar by either getting hit a lot or by performing actually well and hitting your enemy. Um. Yeah, then you're activating your spell card, well, declaring it, and by pressing the same buttons again, you can actually, well, perform your spell card. And I'm really horrible right now because of all the explaining. Because I actually want to show what I'm saying as well. Oh uh, yeah, each character has two different spell cards. 
The first one here was Fantasy Seal, and I believe this one here is Evil Seal Circle. At least it looks like it should do that. And yeah, they deal quite a lot of damage, actually. Um, each spell card can only be used once per battle. And, uh... I don't say the replay. And, um... Well, what else can I say? Oh, uh... During the spell card declaration, um, the timer is stopped, so in case you want to defeat your enemy quickly before the timer runs out, you can potentially declare a spell card. Okay, Marissa, you're wrong. <laughs> yeah, Marissa's move set, her strong attack is a laser. I have to have a laser for Marissa. And her, her normal shot, or a weak shot, is, well, a star. Okay, Marissa. Please stop attacking me. Um. Yeah, Marissa is a more speed based character. And I love that for my fighters. So, yeah, I'm abusing Marissa's speediness in this game. Yeah, Marissa, as you just saw, has once her broom rush. I have forgotten the name, unfortunately. Uh, as a special attack. Then she also has, if my enemy would please let me attack again, okay. Marissa has also the swipe here, which I love. <laughs> uh, she can also throw a potion, and then she also has this attack here. Okay, I guess I should... Oops, I didn't want to do that. Play a little better now, I don't want to actually lose. Yeah, spell cards are for once Master Spark, which has a really annoying uh, long delay. And I lost. Don't. And she also has uh, Blazing Star. Oh, about um, time running out. In this game, actually, you don't win based on your uh, remaining health, but instead by um, the percentage uh, next to your, well, next to your name. The one with the higher percentage will actually win the battle, not the one with, well, more remaining HP. So yeah, that's something to note. Um, yeah, the... Uh, the percentage value will increase by, well, using attacks. You actually don't have to hit your enemy even. But if you hit them hard, like uh, in a counter, then the counter will increase quite a lot more. So yeah, that's something to note, and this time I'm playing a little better. <laughs> and of course now I do a shot. And, um, yeah. The counter has also an, uh, another, um, another purpose. Because if the counter reaches plus 100%, your character will be able to use their final spell card. Unfortunately, it's a little tricky to activate it because, well, you first have to get 100%, and, well, if you're getting critically hit by your opponent, the counter will unfortunately decrease, and it will also increase if you ran away from your enemy for a longer period of time. Although, if you um, rush towards your enemy for a longer period of time, it will also increase, so that's something you notice, well. Ouch. Um, yeah, I guess that's all I can say about the counter. Well, the um, final spell cards, I'll show them later. Uh, they are really powerful. The Ramus one will always deal something around the 6,000 uh, damage mark, which will more than halfway kill your enemies. Okay, maybe I can show off Blazing Star with Marissa. But for that, I would have to get hit a little more. Of course, I got hit there. Okay, now I can show Blazing Star. Yeah, timer stopped again, like I already said. Oh, well, I don't even care if I hit her. Oh, I hit! Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Great attack with Marissa, since it has uh, immune ability to, uh, to projectiles and does a lot of damage as well. I actually like, Bla like Blazing Star a lot more than, um, than Master Spark, to be all honest. And, oh, um, I'm gonna go into Marissa's battle once more because I forgot something to explain about her. You might notice a 
left or well in the corner um the bottom corner of the screen next to Marisa's well uh, spirit bar there are three stars these stars um, will well fill up if you use a special attack or Marisa's strong shot if you use a special attack if all three of them are filled the next special attack will increase in power and get wall smashing capabilities. So yeah, that's something to take note of because, well, you deal more damage with that attack. You can play around a little with it and, uh, well, fight a little more strategically. Or just annihilate your enemy like that. <laughs> that works too. But yeah, that's uh, Marisa's uh, special property. The famous one is being able to fly through the border of the screen. And I've got enough with Marisa now. And Ichirin also has uh, something attack based. Let's show Ichirin. Um, yeah, she has the kanji for I have no idea, but I believe it's something like Rage because if Ichirin gets hit, this kanji will become bigger and redder. And, well, eventually Ichirin herself will turn red and, well, will increase the damage of her attacks. Ah, uh, yeah, Ichirin, as you might notice, is the slow but powerful type of character in this game. So, exactly the opposite of what I like. But okay, I do like powerful, but I don't like uh, the, her slowness. Ugh. Yeah, I'm. I might horribly lose here, <laughs> especially since I don't play much as Ichirin because she's so slow. Yeah, Ichirin's attacks. Uh, I just shook most of them off her special attacks. This one here is the one I like the most. <laughs> um. Oh yeah, uh, something I haven't talked about yet, I believe, is the skill cards will slightly differ from. Um, from each other depending on where... Holy heck, how did I get here? Minus 8. Um, yeah, they will slightly differ depending on which uh, directional button you put them on. Come on! Nope! Oh. Haha! <laughs> you glad to split spot card in time. Now all I have to do is defeating Eugenian, actually. <laughs> ah, that won't go well. Um... Yeah, for example, Ichirin's fist that comes from- oh, Boonzone's fist, actually. That comes from the sky. Yeah, oh, come on, Ichirin! Oh, well, I lost. Holy, minus 31! <laughs> uh, yeah, the fist uh, she calls Boonzone that comes down from the sky. Um, depending on where you place it on the four directions, well, the fist will either be further away from Ichirin or directly next to her. Well, if you place to the right, it will be at the far other side of the screen, so yeah. I have this attack on the right, though. Because if, it, if you place it on the right, Unzan will actually move across the screen instead of just being next to the Like, when you use it on any other button. Marisa's potions also work that way, that depending on which button you place it on, um, the potion will travel further. Or in an upward arc. Oh um, there we go, I'm Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. What else to say? Well, I could try to show off the spell cards if I get the possibility to do so. Oh, not bad. Oh, also, uh, something about the... Uh, well, the circle around your character icon, well, you might have noticed already that it is in relation to the number, and to the percentage number. Um, if the, the blue bar shows, um, well, how well you're doing, um, as in landing attacks, or, well, rather critical attacks, and the red bar is indicating, uh, well, how often you get hit by your enemy, or how long you're running away from them. Um, 
yeah, the grey area, which is completely, well, filled out in my case now. Um, it is, well, undecided and is mostly used at the start. But yeah, my percentage is now plus two, but since um, I have no grey area anymore, my bar will slightly uh, faster will fill out now, or will decrease slightly faster because, well, the percentage will be uh, changed faster because, well, the percentage is decided by, um, well, the difference between red and blue, and, well, if there's no gray anymore, the, uh, well, blue or will overwrite the red and vice versa. Okay, I guess it could show the other spell card now. If Ichilin actually declares it. Thank you. I have no idea what that one actually does. <laughs> and we will not know after that one either. <laughs> because I got hit there! Ichirin! Let me to Oh crap. Good thing that enemies don't use spell cards. Yeah, Ichirin has a hundred percent on her meter, and now she could potentially declare her Okay, it's already done, but she could use her final spell card, which I just prevent. Yeah, fortunately, for some reason, enemies don't want to use their spell cards, which makes this battle, or the battles in general, a lot easier, and I don't really like that because, well, in the online community, they always use spell cards, and you can't practice against them if the enemy never uses them. Uh, yeah, let's fight once more, because I have some more stuff to talk about. One being, why the heck is Marissa's main costume blue and her second costume black? <laughs> yeah, well, why not, <laughs> I guess. Her costume changes every game anyway. Um, yeah, so... Uh, yeah, final spell cards. They deal a ton of damage. Especially Ramus, because, well, yeah, I'll talk about that later. And, um, oh yeah, uh, the Spirit Fire, exactly, okay. Um, in the previous fighting games, it was, um, that if you block an attack, your spirit, well, the spirit in your spirit bar will decrease. Here, however, the maximum amount of your spirit will actually decrease. Of course, I shouldn't have chosen Marissa to show that off, but <laughs> because he is my best character. Maybe the enemy will No? Well, yeah, if you use... Ah, uh, oh, there we go. If you use uh, spirit attacks, the uh, um, spirit bar will fill with red, and if you block, well, the spirit bar itself will increase. Meaning that you can perform a lot less spirit attacks. So that's something to be careful about. So yeah, um, normally blocking will decrease your, uh, your spirit bar. However, there's also the possibility of border blocking, I believe it is called. That is if you press the block button exactly in the moment when you are being attacked. Then uh, the spirit meter will actually not decrease. However, it is rather difficult to pull off, so yeah. I prefer just blocking so I don't get hit. Oh yeah, that was something else I wanted to talk about, and I guess uh, now I could show off the um, the final spell cards. So yeah, I've already prepared something for you, and um, well, I'll be right back. As I already mentioned, you can perform your um, last word spell cards once you have 100% on your meter right next to your name. Uh, yeah, on default you can activate them by pressing up and, uh, well, the shots together, well, at least in the name's in this case, and that does a whole ton of damage for Rema. The main reason is that for Rema, the enemy has to attack you. Like, uh, that one spell card with Sakya, when, uh, well, the enemy had to attack with a first attack and only then the spike could be activated. Marisa's case though, uh, you actually have to uh, hit the enemy with a spell card here. 
the only reason why she deals so much damage right now was because uh, Ichirin had attacked Marisa as well and will counter damage. Ichirin though is, well, interesting. She doesn't actually do just a normal attack, but instead she does a uh, Suika on us and calls a huge Unza. And she can deal quite a lot of damage if the enemy does not block. So yeah, Ichirin definitely has the most damage potential, but also the least damage potential if she screws up and, well, if the enemy blocks constantly, then, well, she'll probably deal next to no damage. At least I believe the enemy can block, it could be rather unfair if, she could, if the enemy couldn't. And yeah, I believe it can. Oh, and uh, I totally forgot to talk about the most vital thing here. Despite this being an aerial fighter, we actually have a center lane where most of the fighting takes place. And uh, pretty much everything else we can do is uh, jumping and diving down into a lower layer, but still you always get back to the center lane. So yeah, it could just as well be a uh, ground fighter with, well, having the ability to dive down and WHAT THE HECK?! That should be that easy. Oh well. Uh, so yeah, I guess I finally talked about everything that's important. Well, at least I can't think of anything else, so um, yeah. That was all for me for this game here. And I'll see you in my next Let's Play.